Oh, twins. Hey guys, what's up? We are the O Twins. That's right, my name is Daniel. And my name is Raphael. We're twin brothers and we're also doctors and we like to look at both sides of the argument. Seeing it from both sides of the coin. Exactly, exactly. I'm trying to ask the question, uh, what is the difference between British police officers and uh, American police officers? So for me, there's, there's three things. Number one, British police officers, they may stop me quite regularly. Like in America, black people get stopped all the time. But I, I, I'm, not, I'm not feeling threatened. I don't feel powerless. I don't feel that I can't speak up. And I think that's huge because I feel that we're talking to each other as equals. Of course, he has a professional obligation to fulfill, but we're talking to each other you know, quite respectfully and then the things will progress, okay? The next thing is that I feel that I can challenge a police officer in a respectful way. And I often do that. I've been stopped 16 times in the last two years when my peers who are white haven't been stopped that many times. And yeah, I do think it's because I'm black. I'm being stopped because I'm a black young male in a, in an okay car, you know, driving in a, in a nice place. Yeah, that does happen. So I'd say uh, that's quite similar uh, in, in America. It happens a lot. But the difference, the difference happens where the interaction happens between myself and the police officer. Now, I feel justified to ask the police officer what exactly he's stopping me for, and I, I don't threat. I'm not, I don't feel threatened for my life. I don't feel scared that if I ask this, if I do this, you know, he's going to quickly do something. You know. Also, I think physically, policemen in the UK, physically, they don't impose themselves upon you unless they have to. Of course, they ha if they have to, they have to. But I think in America, there's a lot of physicality. There's a lot of brute force. There's a lot of we are stronger than you. If you want to fight, let's go. If you want to fight, let's bring it. And I don't like that. I think it's unsafe, it's unhealthy. There's a difference in the power, the, the physical power, in terms of, of course, in America, they can have firearms. All the police hold, generally, uh, a firearm, and, and they can use that, and they're ready to use it. They're trained to use it in a very uh, active way. In England, that's not the case at all. So, in terms of what they're capable of, and what they're ready to do, there's a big difference there, which changes the whole dynamic. In many other countries, they carry guns, but in America, there's a particular, listen, I'm not gonna say trigger happy, but I'm, I'm just gonna say the threshold to use is a lot less. But don't get but me- Particularly when it comes to black people, they are okay to use it. They are ready to use it. They're poised, they're poised, ready to use it. That's the way it seems from our point of view, from what we've read, from what we've watched, and from what we've been told. Let's give examples. So when I've been stopped by the police in the UK, you know, I drive, I drive a decent car, um, and that probably contributes to the reason why I've been stopped. Um, I don't drive recklessly at all. I drive very safely. But because I'm a doctor, I, I of course work late shifts and the times and the places that I'm driving, they could look a bit awkward. So it's fair enough, someone might stop me. But if I compare that to someone, you know, one of my white colleagues, um, they're stopped a lot less. Um, and I'm, I'm stopped very regularly. So it's something which is at the front of my mind every time I drive and it's something which has become normalized. So so what happens when they stop me? When they stop me, usually there's a, there's a forwardness, there's a forwardness I feel, but then from my point of view, I feel like they can't disrespect me in a way where um, I would feel scared. I feel that when they're talking to me, that the conversation is balanced and I don't need to kind of bow my head or put my head down. And because of that, you, so, so they talk to you as an equal. They talk to you as an equal, and you don't feel threatened by physical harm. You don't yeah. feel threatened physically. I, th I think that's a huge thing. Yeah. So sorry to interrupt you, but how policemen impose themselves physically. Yeah. You know. Um, I think sometimes they are a bit more forward and a bit more aggressive, and they, they come across as if they're trying to dominate. However, I feel completely, I, c I feel completely able to be able to kind of push back against that forwardness. Within reason, of course, I'm not going to abuse them. I'm not going to do anything. Push back with conversation, with, with conversation, and ask him, ask them perhaps why they've stopped me. Um, you know, calmly asking the questions to get the information that I want, and I always have a little bit of research that I'm doing in the background. You know, I want to know, you know what exactly they're looking for and what they found suspicious about me, and you know, just to get their if they have any prejudices. Do you feel threatened? I don't feel threatened. I don't feel threatened, and that's probably because you know they. they um, are less likely to, to, to shoot me. Um, and, and on top of that, I'll tell you about my... They can't shoot you because they don't have a gun, which is Well, good. They, ha they have a taser. They have a taser, yeah. okay. um, which, which is very dangerous. Yeah. But, but I think they're less likely to use that taser. But one of the first times I was stopped uh, was... Uh, I was actually driving 
away from my family house. I visited my parents, and it was maybe 1 a.m. There was no one on the street, nobody on the street, right? And I was just driving. So I went down a cul-de-sac, a little quiet area, and then I saw the police police lights going off. I thought, I didn't see it there before. Where did it come from? Anyway, it, it was an unmarked car. So I looked to my side, and it was very dark at this point, and I saw this really tiny car, this Corsa, packed four policemen in this car, like really squashed up. And I thought, I thought, what's this about? What's this? Jelly babies in a, in a jar. <laughs> Literally, I was like, the policeman said to me, the first thing he said to me was, where's the fire? And I thought, I thought, what's this about? Um, and he actually went on to say, oh, what I meant was, why are you driving so fast? And I thought, I thought to myself, that, what, a, what a weird thing to say. Why is he saying that to me? He's saying, basically, why are you driving so fast? Yeah. And, I, and, I, and I said to him... You, so you felt he wasn't being professional? I thought he wasn't being professional, and he wasn't being straightforward, and he was being a little bit funny. But, at the end of the day, I didn't feel threatened. Because I felt, as a human being, as a black man, that... I could speak my ground, and I, and I challenged him. I said, what do you mean, where's the fire? Uh, I don't find that funny, that's not a joke. And uh, he actually took a step back and he said, oh, fair enough, yeah. this is the reason why I stopped you. So, so I've got a question, Dan. Um, when the police stop you, do you feel it's fair? And I think that's a bit of a loaded question in the fact that they've got a job to do. I've been stopped and, 16 and, times in the last two and, years, so and, I, don't, I don't think and, it's fair. And there are statistics, there are, there are figures that they're thinking about. I've been stopped 16 times. In the last two years. Can you please it's, expand it's not, upon them? It's not fair. It's not fair and it's not right. When I talk to my white counterparts, how many times they've been stopped, you know, and they drive a lot more recklessly than me. But I drive very well. I drive very well. And, you know, I've been stopped 60 times. He's a times. very good driver. He drives very, very well. <laughs> you know? Um, so, so the point that I'm getting at, the question that I'm getting at, Daniel, is that when they stop you, in their mind, they're stopping you for a reason. And there's numbers behind the reason that they stop you. No. Do you want me to say it? All right. So they're stopping you because in their mind, there's more chance that there's that you would be doing something wrong or be carrying something or the, the chance that you've stolen a car is higher than, than stopping someone that's white. So do you think that's that's reasonable for them to think like that or not? My question to you is why, do they, why is there more chance of, of me stealing something or doing something than someone else? Why? So there's a, a personal bias that the personal, that each police officer um, perhaps can't be held accountable for or blamed because that's what he's been exposed to. So when he makes his decision, trying to do the best job he can, is is he, is he wrong for making those decisions which might seem a bit prejudice if he's just trying to do a good job? And, and it's, it's a difficult question, very difficult. I mean, being balanced, that's what we're trying to be here, we should at least be able to see that point of view. However, the situation in America is completely different on a completely different level. And it's almost hard to compare what we go through. In summary of the whole situation, what's the difference? Um, I think it comes down to culture, and and the fundamental and the, the the foundation of American culture. I think the police, the police system, and the way they treat black people is really just symptomatic, and changing it is a generational thing. Um, right now, what they can do is is put is put rules and regulations in place to stop situations like that happening. I think even black people think that if a police officer kills me unfairly, he might not get in trouble. So my my life might be essentially I might be killed in vain, and that's really harrowing, unsettling thought. It's horrible. It's, ab it's absolutely horrible. Yeah. I, think, I think you encapsulated it perfectly. Essentially. Um, Thank, you. Thank you. Essentially, uh, American police officers, anybody or British police officers could be racist and could be horrible, but <laughs> American police officers can and have and will act on it and do something very bad and not get in trouble for it. And that is wrong. And the problem is, looking at you know people shouting that, oh, there's a black person hurting me, even though, it's not, even though they're not actually doing anything, but they know, they know that the police will believe them and harm, they feel liberated to harm that, that person or take them away that is what's wrong mm. that's what I have to say in saying that I just want to add in I, I want to ask the question what should what should have been done by the people around or perhaps people in similar situations you know some people say that they should have helped him and they should have intervened they would have been shot they would have been shot dead that's of course why they didn't and him or someone in that situation 
I, I can't I can't help but think that in any situation where you're being stopped by such an authority, you essentially have to back down completely and essentially, you know, take your self respect out of the situation because you of course want to get out of the situation and you want to live to see another day. There's a chance that if if you don't do that, you won't live to see another day. I've said what I need to say. Guys, thank you for listening to us. That's the O Twins. Um, subscribe, like, and follow, please. Oh, twins. twins.